Dante in your super chat. Do you know what years Paul Castellano and Tato were made? Geez, I really don't know, but I will tell you this. The books were closed in 1955, and they were both made before that, before they closed. They were there during some of the wars when Albert Anastasia was around and Lucky Luciano, and that's the era they grew up in. Uh, Paul Castellano was a captain way back, um, and Carlo Gambino was only just a maid guy wasn't a boss or nothing like that. So they go uh, way, way back. I know it's before 1955 for sure. I know that. But the exact year, I don't know. Thank you, Sammy. Jack Jennings in the super chat. No question. Just wanted to say thank you. And Sammy, you are a legend. Yeah, I, You know, age is starting to do that. I think I am outliving everybody. So in a way, that's going to make me a legend. But yeah, I thank you so much. I appreciate it. I know what you're saying and where you're coming from, and I appreciate um, your, your. It's a beautiful comment. Awesome. We have Sodan 2324 in the super chat. Sammy, can you tell us about the Lufthansa heist and how did you feel about it? And where were you? I wasn't on it, that's for sure. But I know the crew. Uh, you know, Paul Vario and uh, all those people like you saw in Goodfellas, they did the Flutons Ice. Um, I don't remember the exact amount, 11 million, some, I don't know how many millions of dollars. And it was just a walk in and take it. It was just like the movie said, exactly like that. Um, they cut that up. They did it. Um, but uh, that was a hell of a move. Uh but it was exactly like, if you watch the movie, they it was right to the T almost. You know, uh, what the hell is his name? Uh, the guy who cooperated and told the story. Henry Hill. Henry Hill. Uh, uh, Nick Pileggi wrote the, the movie. And uh, Nick told me, he said he was very, very accurate with what he uh, told us. And Nick is a type of guy, he loves doing mob movies and movies, but he wants authenticity. He wants the truth. He's he's a bug for that. You know, some writers, they just write anything. But him, I know him personally. He's a good friend of mine now. Uh, and he's really like, he's that type of guy, which I like. He, he looks into facts. Of course, Hollywood always takes it a step or another step. That's normal. Um, you know, I was writing my book, Underboss, and uh, we talked about the first guy I killed, Joe Colucci. We were talking about his wife. She was a little, she was good looking. She was a little promiscuous. And uh, I'm telling the whole story. And the writer, Peter Moss, says, oh, wow, Sammy, I'm going to say that you had sex with her. And this is going to be a great scene in the movie. So I said, uh, I know her. She's still alive. She's a friend of mine, really. Uh, and I didn't have sex with her. I mean, she's going to be this lying fuck. So I don't know if I really want to do that. He said, it'll make a great scene in a movie. Yeah, yeah we'll make other great scenes. And, and I, I didn't do it. But I understand that, you know, if, if they think it's going to make a good scene or something, hey, they, they make, that's what they do. They make movies. So, but Nick Pelleggi, I know he's very, he bent on, you know, being as accurate as he can be. But he's not stupid. He knows it's in Hollywood, so. And uh, I became pretty friendly with him. And I'm dying to have a cup of coffee with him and meet him. But we talk on the phone. We joke with each other. We laugh. Uh, great guy. Really, really great guy. He's a little bit older than me. He's 89. I'm 78 next month. And... Um, we get along. I feel like you know you hear two rocking chairs in the background while we're while we're talking. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's awesome, Sammy. Amazing. Uh, so Don twenty three twenty four again in your super chat. Sammy, have you ever been to Far Rockaway Queens? And can we get a show with you and your staff making some great Italian food? Here's my envelope. Great, great, great. Listen, Far Rockaway, uh, Queens, 
I'm not exactly sure of the the exit, but I think that's where we dumped Joe Colucci. We killed him in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, but I think we went to uh, Rockaway. Um, there's a pier out there with a big circular thing and um, that exit. I forgot the name of the exit, but yeah, I was out there for that. But I never went out there to hang out or anything like that. If the, you know, It was more of a residential area, nice homes, sitting on grass and you know, a little bit of landscaping and stuff. When you were in Brooklyn, everything is concrete and brick. So I was, you know, never hung out there. But I like the area. Uh, Leo Velasquez, in your super chat, can you tell us about Kennedy's and Carlos Marcello? Kennedy mm -hmm. and Carlos Marcello. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very, very long story. I do know a lot about it. Carlos Masala hated, it wasn't John Kennedy, like John Kennedy. The mafia liked John Kennedy and his father. They couldn't stand Bobby Kennedy. I'm not going to get into the whole thing because I'm, I'm gonna, about to do a whole story with someone about the Kennedys. I mean, I don't know, you know, particularly what happened, but... I mean, there's a lot involved in that story, and uh, some of the people I'm talking about uh, have a tremendous interest in it. I think some things are finally coming out of the government. And I will say this. I think it was a combination of a lot. The mafia hated this Bobby Kennedy. The vice president, Linda B. Johnson, hated him. The government... CIA and FBI Hoover hated him. So I think it was a conglomeration of so many different things. The Cuban, uh, when they invaded Cuba, the Cubans tried to take back the country away from Castro, and he didn't back it, and they got destroyed. They had a hard on from the Sicilians have an old uh, proverb. You cut off the head of a fish and the, the fish dies. So if you look at it that way, like a Sicilian would look at it, even if you had a hunt on for Joe, Bobby Kennedy, John is the head. They cut the head off, the body dies. And uh, I'm not saying that they did it, there, but they, I think everybody had a hand in it. I know a hell of a lot more than I'm talking about now because someday it's going to come out. I'm talking with some really heavyweight people, and uh, I was interviewed by the government over it. So hold on down the road. There's going to be a lot more that I talk about as far as the Kennedy hit. And let me tell you one more thing. You know, I was 18 years old when he was killed, and uh, my mother called me up. I was home sleeping. My mother called me up, and she says, you sleeping? Yeah, get up, get up. I said, why, Ma? She said, they killed the president. Turn on the television. I said, I didn't kill him. She says, I know you stupid bastard. I know you didn't kill him. Turn the television on. So I thought I, when I told that a couple of times, people busted out laughing. So I wanted to tell that little story about my mother. <coughs> All right. Um, okay, Sammy, in your super chat, Algato, Cumpa Buenasera, tell us about the Pajama King situation with Don Gigante, Pietro from Corsica. Did you just say all that stuff? Is that Spanish or is that? Uh, that was Spanglish, Italian, bicicleta. What, what happened? What, what, pajama party? Pajama King situation with Don Gigante. Don Gigante? Mm -hmm. Who the fuck is Don Degante? Is that the one? Oh, Chin. Chin, chin. De, chin de Gigante. All right. Um, he walked around with a robe for a long time. He put on an act. He had a case, and he played the crazy guy. And um, they got away with it. And uh, Because if you don't understand the charges against you, they can't take you to trial. So that was his theory, and he played it. He played it to the hilt, and uh, he played it for a very, very long time. 
you know, I met with him a lot of times. He was far from stupid or crazy. Um, I, there was a number of times I met with him. I, I think we even got to like each other and trust each other a little bit. Um, you know, there was a couple of things he did like with that that I thought was crazy. One day the FBI went to his house. His mother was there. Now she was an old woman. So he ran upstairs, got undressed, completely nude, turned on the shower with an umbrella and stood inside the thing to look like he's totally crazy. Now, in a way that's cool, it's funny, but you know, you're doing that in front of your mom. You know, I, I don't know about that, but um, he was a real tough guy. There's no two ways about it. A tough guy, a man's man, uh, no games. You made a mistake with him, you, you, uh, you bit the dust. He wouldn't even hesitate. But he seemed to be a man of his word. Um, he wasn't money hungry, because I know a lot of times guys would come to me, Sally Dogs came to me one time, he was a captain, and he said, Sammy, do you think I'm in trouble? He won't take money from me. So I said, uh, no, eh, you're not in trouble, I don't think so. He don't want to take money from guys. He takes it from a few people. I heard him say one day, I got enough money. I don't need no more money. Now, he's a simple guy, and he had probably tons and tons of money, and um, he really didn't need it. So, he, he, you know, if you were making money, he would tell you, you got to keep it. And some guys took it like, oh, my God, he's not going to take money from me. Maybe he don't trust me. No, it's not that. He just don't want that implication that relationship with you know he don't want to start that relationship. He's got it with a few people, and that's enough. He's comfortable with that. So. That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, Jamie in the Super Chat. Sammy, did you know Edgardo Greco? He was in the news this past week as he was arrested and was a Cosa Nostra mafia super boss. It said in the headline, and I just wanted your thoughts on it. Yeah, he's uh, he was a mafia. He's a mafia boss in Italy. I don't I don't know him. I read the article just like you did. Um, I understand that um, he was a pretty powerful guy, and he was on the lam a long time. You know, the other boss uh, Toto Arena, the same thing. He was on the lam forever. When he started looking for him, he went on a farm way up in Sicily in the mountains. You know, these guys they chill. They're on a mountain. They're not like a John Gotti. They could, you know, they come out with overalls. They're on a farm. They hang out. They eat pots. Do they drink wine? They could stay on a fucking land forever. It's not that they got to run around. They got a wife. They got kids. They got, you know, maybe a gumbada somewhere. And, and they run their family from those places. So and this guy's been on it. And the same thing like Totorarina. And uh, now they got him, and uh, they'll probably jam him up too because there's probably all kinds of things that they've been looking And now they finally got him, and uh, I don't know. Now, now he's going to fight his case. Nice. Thank you. Andy Kim with his weekly envelope for you, Sammy, and he wants to know, do you feel sorry for El Chapo being locked up in the ADX Supermax? I heard he's trying to escape by threatening the guards. I don't believe he's threatening the guards to escape. Guards can't get him out. I wouldn't give a shit if he had a gun to their head. He, they can't get him out. And giving them money isn't going to work. It, 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 listen, I was in the ADX Supermax. It's tight as a, a drum. When I walked in there, I, 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 these gates and things that were closing behind me, as I was walking in, I said, Sammy, I said to myself, Sammy, you're in hell. This is it. And when I stayed there, uh, it, there's no doubt that it was hell. I, I, I now just talked with uh, a warden, Warden Hood, Bob Hood, who was the warden there while I was there. And I, I'm talking to him. I'm going to do an interview with him, I hope. He's, he was a great guy then, and he's a great guy now. And I'm going to do something on prison reform and stuff like that, and I'm calling him. And I hope to have uh, do an interview with him and two or three other people. I'm working on putting that together. 
it's not easy, but I'm trying to put that together. But um, Chapo, listen, I feel sorry for him. I don't know him personally. I feel I feel sorry for anybody, even the warden. In there, he's a humane type of person. He sympathizes with the guys in there. He says it himself. It's too brutal. We don't. We shouldn't do this to people. We're worried about people in fucking Ukraine and every place else. We have people in prisons that's we worse than animals are being treated worse than animals, and then we talk about recidivism. You know, what do you train? You don't give them nothing. You train them to be animals. When you do serious time, you come out, but you harder. You're not. You're not something that should be back in society. Yeah, you did your time, but you're not being you're not being trained for anything. But, you know, getting back, not so much to for me, but I think of other people who are in prison and you just asked me about Chapo. No. I mean, you know, he, he he's going to do a lot of time. There. There's no doubt about it. It, it. They should release him into a different prison or something and have work down. He's not going to hurt nobody. He's not going to do anything. See, he's got that, what do they, they call that rabbit on his file that he broke out, he got away. Once they know you're a rabbit, that you're looking to, you know, get away and bribe people and do things, you're not going to get out of that situation that easy. I think he's going to be stuck in that for a long time. I heard personally through my sources and FBI or people who know of him and uh, said uh, it's, it's, it's gotten to him already. The ADX Supermax is... Beyond words, I don't know how the fuck I held it together. I'm going to be honest. And I don't know how I, there's a lot of guys who commit suicide in there. It's rib, it's brutal, bro. It is brutal. I tell people out here that I know, go in your bedroom. Whatever your, your bed, a little TV, we'll pass the food to you. Stay in your bedroom for six weeks, not six and a half years, six weeks. Watch how you, uh, you know. They're going to go nuts in there. They're going to want... I'm, I don't want to stay in this fucking room no more. They're not going to want to do it. <coughs> so if they had a six-week stay in there with a lot of the comforts, I don't want to take the comforts away from them, but they got to stay in that room. There's a bathroom in that room. You use the bathroom. Never come out. Don't come out. Watch. Then they'll come out and they'll say, you did six fucking half years in a hole that had all fucking concrete and bars and none of these fucking luxuries. And then you'll look at it and you'll say to yourself, how the fuck do they do this to any human being? Anybody. I don't care if it's Chapo. I don't care who it is. Now, if you get a complete fucking nut, serial killer, child molester, I have no sympathy for them. I don't give a fuck if they stay in a hole or if you killed them be honest with you, I'd rather you kill them. But um, no, I don't think Chapo should be in the hole. I sympathize with him. I don't know him personally. I'm not rooting for him. I'm, I'm rooting that nobody, they shouldn't do this to nobody. He's doing his time. He's pinched. Let him do time like a fucking human being. Or, or put, put him to sleep. Kill him. What are you, like, this fucking phony shit? Oh, oh, we don't want to kill him. But you'll do that to him. You'll deteriorate his fucking body until he can't breathe no more. That's a better way? Is that humane? Who the fuck thinks of these things? If you def definitely don't want him out in society no more, then kill him. Stop paying all the money to keep him alive and torturing him like that. I, I don't even get into this, but I I'm going to get into this with this prison reform you know, I know a lot of guys in prison. I, obviously, I was in prison 22 years of my life, and I know a ton of fucking guys. Every race, every nationality, every religion, every everything. And there's so many fucking guys. Not that they didn't deserve to get arrested and go to jail. They did some crimes just like me. I went. But there's a limit. There's a limit. Reform him. Let him come out. Let them have a concealed weapon permit like everybody else. Let them vote like everybody else. Let them get a fucking job. He can't get a job. You get some of these guys are high-level guys. 
you you want them to go to McDonald's and flip hamburgers for fucking twelve fifteen dollars an hour, whatever the hell it is. It ain't gonna happen. And then you close doors. He can't get an apartment. He can't get this. And this is what I was saying. I was fortunate that I had my wife, my son, my daughter, my grandchildren were up, getting up in age. In their tw- not up in age, but they were like in their twenties. So I got a lot of help, and I had a lot of friends who welcomed me. I'm going to say who they are, but I did have a lot of friends who helped me a little bit when I got out. Uh, some people I expected to get help from, I didn't. But some I didn't expect it, and I got it. So look at it you know, a whole bunch of ways. But um, I'm going to work on prison reform. And while I'm talking about that shit, I might as well talk about the the opening of the borders and 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 uh, before I get to that, is there more questions? Oh yes, yeah, yes, yeah. There ask is. me questions. Okay. I don't want to take the whole. Okay, um, Ryan Brown in your super chat, Sammy. Here is my weekly envelope. I was wondering if you knew Norman Dupont at all. Uh, saw him in the Ravenite tapes. Also, ever seen the prank where that TV show tried to pull on John Gotti delivering balloons to him? I knew Norman DuPont, and I never saw the prank. And the the apartment where the tapes were caught, John was caught on tape. A maid guy was in that apartment. He died. His wife, that was Norman DuPont's aunt. And he used to make that meeting happen. Um, John told me one time he was considering making him. and. He's a coffee guy, but he was a stand-up guy. I'm not putting him down because he made coffee and he, you know. But John told me he even done a piece of work. So I said, wow, that's that's a good guy. I, gave, I had a different respect for him, and he he was good. He was a good guy, and obviously he did a piece of work, and maybe he should have got made. You know, I don't know if he ever got made, but I knew him. He was a nice guy, good guy all the way around, always. You know, do anything or a stand-up guy as well now, I know. Thank you, Sammy. Josiah in the super chat with his envelope for you. Sammy, if you go back in time to right after the Spark Steakhouse, with the knowledge you have now, what would you have done different to ensure the family's future? I would have killed John Gotti and, and made Frankie the boss and me the underboss. If I would have known he was going to do what he did, I'm sure Frankie would have killed him, wouldn't even have hesitated. When we finally decided to help him and take over the family and do this, that, and the other thing, Frankie told me, point blank, listen, I could be his underboss, he can't be mine. He could be a good boss, we'll be the power behind the throne, Sammy, me and you. (coughs) If he doesn't do the right thing, if he acts the fool like he normally acts, We'll kill him, I'll be the boss, you'll be my under. I shook his hand and we did it. So I'm sure Frankie, and Frankie was no, no clown, nobody to play with, another guy like Chin Giganti, man of his word, super tough guy. I'm sure he would have been saying, Sammy, come on, let's take him the fuck out. And if, you know, my power and Frankie's power, he would have died in three seconds. And Frankie would have took over. And I would have been his under boss. It would have been a different ball game. Frankie was on a down low, just like I was. Frankie was a uh, 40 underdog, just like I was. So I think we would have had a much better administration. Uh, I'm, I'm sure of it. Because what John did with all of that publicity, like I said, you don't call him a rat or anything like that. But what he did, he destroyed the fucking mafia. It was cons. He brought so much heat on himself and everybody else. Court orders, judges signing things. I mean, it was insane what he did. And when I flipped with the government, they loved him. I said, what the fuck did you love him? He just put him away. Sammy, he brought the whole mob. Guys we never even knew was in the mob uh, up front. He gave it to us on a silver platter. And then I cooperated, which was made it even worse. But, uh, you know, I, I knew it was a tremendous mistake. And I know if Frankie was alive, we would have took him out and took it over. 
excuse me, snorting like that. I with this cold, I mean, I probably sound like a wolf. No, not at all. You're okay, Sammy. We're glad to have you on the on the chat today, and thanks for toughing it out for yeah. your viewers. Um, Mickey Blankenship says has a comment and said, "Remember, when you fuck with the bull, you're gonna get the horns, baby." That's right. That's what you're gonna get. Sammy, uh, Hector De Anda with his envelope for you this week. Hello, Sammy. Do you remember what you were doing during the moon landing and what did you and your crew think about it? The moon landing. Um, I don't think the mafia gave a fuck about the moon landing. I tell you the truth, the gospel truth. I, you know, they would have probably on TV. I remember seeing them getting off, landing on the moon and stuff like that. But we we can't get a piece of it. We had nothing to do with it, so we didn't give a fuck. <coughs> <coughs> I need a cigar, I think. Fair That's enough. That's why I choke in peace. Yeah. Got Thomas Galvano in the super chat with his envelope. Did you know my grandfather, Sam the Assassin Pittori, powerful soldier in the Columbos, active 50s through the 80s? Sam the Assassin. Now, there was a guy, Sam, I, I, I don't know if they call him the assassin, it, it, Sam, Sam Black, or Sammy Black, or I forgot what they call him. Was he a tall guy, thin, you know, darkish skin, brown type of skin? Uh, if that's the guy, I knew him, and I knew him well. He was in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, and he used to hang around all the time. Um, I'm not sure. There was a couple of them that hung out, these old timers. One of them got shot. I'm, I'm not sure if it was him. Uh, it might have been him. I don't think it was a hit type of thing, but I think he got killed. And so I don't know if it's him. But uh, I know Sam. I don't know. I didn't. I don't know the name assassin. But he was a tough old man, good guy. If 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 we're talking about the same guy. We'll see if he comments back. Um, Ice like Winnipeg. Sammy, can you do a video about your tattoos? They look so dope. A video? I mean, I, I got all of these in while I was in prison. I had uh, taken them off the first time I came out. I only had three. And uh, when I went back in prison, I had no tattoos. And I got all of this. Part of my upper chest is all tattooed. And my back is tattooed. I had said this a couple of times. I know I was going back in prison under a long sentence, 20 years. And uh, I knew I was in trouble. I had that label of a cooperator. And and uh, I just tattooed up, put my prison hat on, and said, I'll probably get killed. But the first guy who fucks with me, I'm going to kill him. And then I'm going to leave that impression. And I didn't care if I got a life sentence because I really, when I went in at 55 and I got a 20-year sentence and walked in with that label, I never thought I'd survive. But it just so I got a guardian angel, I think. There's a lot of things I didn't think I was going to survive, and I survived it. Watch, I'll die. It is cold. This bullshit-ass cold. <laughs> Uh, Ethan Worley with his envelope for you, Sammy. How do you start a construction company? Well, you got to know something about the industry. You got to know something about construction. And you know, if you know something, I worked as a carpenter when I was young. I worked as a plumber. I was a laborer. So I understood it a little bit. I was fortunate enough to have my brother-in-law, Eddie Garofola, who really, it was a plumbing contractor, but he knew construction like the back of his hand. So when I went in, I had a couple of people, my wife's uncle, Danny Arell, Irish guy, was a carpenter. He was a tremendous help to me. So getting in and flowing with that, and it's like any other business, instead of, uh, Selling dresses, or you, you, you're selling houses. You're, you're building houses rather than building a car. Whatever it is, it's, it's the same business, 
techniques. You know, you need connections, not connections, it's business connections. Where you're going to buy supplies, you're going to get subcontractors to work for you. You can't do it all. So if you know a good plumbing company, like here in Arizona, there's a lot of Mexicans who come out. They have carpentry companies and uh, uh, concrete work. They're really good at it. The prices are good. So you hook up with something like that, people like that, and they're hardworking people. So you've got to have good people, hardworking people, trustworthy people, you know, and you don't look to rob your customers. And of above all, you got to be legit. People got to trust you in business, and your name is everything. So sometimes you get a little tempted, your hands will get a little sticky, and you'll make a name like that, and that's the, that's the end of you. So. Thank you, Sammy. Um, L wants to know: Did you ever shoot pool? Shoot pool? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. And uh, I was terrible, but I was always good in the pool room when we had a fight. I was always hitting somebody with a stick or throwing a ball at him or something when we were kids. This is when we were real kids, like the rampers, and we would go in the pool room. It wasn't an hour when went by and there was a fight. So, uh, but I, I was never really that good. I, I didn't know how to play pool. I even went bowling when I was a kid. And uh, I did that for a while, too. Late at night, we'd go in the bowling alley, and we would bet on who's who was good. And I think I was, uh, like, I used to bowl like, uh, I don't even know what the hell it was, 100 and something. It wasn't like any kind of big score. Like, these guys, if you hit all, it was a 300 game. So I don't remember exactly what I used to get. But I, I think I wasn't too bad, you know. Especially if I played against the girls. I was good. I was like a champ. <laughs> Thank you, Sammy. Um, David G. wants to know, did you have any actual interactions with Henry Hill? Me, myself, no. No. He was a drug addict. They didn't like him. They wanted to kill him. They asked Paul Vario to kill him. I think Paul Vario was banging his wife. Uh, his mother, I'm sorry, his mother. And and Paul Varro didn't want to hurt him. I think his gumada was the mother. I think, I'm not sure, but that's what I had heard once. You heard it here, here fo first, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now if it's this poor woman's alive, she'll be saying, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along, Jay McCollins, 5720. Really enjoying the video, Sammy. Keep them coming. One question. Did the Gambinos run the Cleveland Mafia? No. Nobody runs nobody. Each mafia, Cleveland, Chicago, the Jersey families, the five families in New York, each family has its own boss. But it, the, higher, the, the only thing higher than that boss in that state is the commission. You live by the commission's rules and the commission's rules are right across the board just about to everybody. Any family, no matter what state you're in, we abide by the same rules and regulations and stuff like that. Years ago, there was 21 families in the country on the commission. Then it went down to like 14. When I was in, you know, active, it was down to actually five in New York, the Philadelphia family, which was Angelo Bruno, who was killed and started a war over there, and the boss in uh, Buffalo. And I believe that that was it. Then the boss in Buffalo was out. Angelo Bruno was killed. That was the end of that seat. Nobody took it again. It was down to the five families. I believe probably that's what it is right now. I mean, I don't know what they do right now. It's a different, you know, I've been out of it so long. I'm not sure exactly what they do. I do know a lot of them, but, and uh, they made a lot of smart moves. They're not doing any murders anymore, which is a good thing, a smart thing. When, when you're not doing stuff like that, 
The FBI don't give a shit. You're doing these small things, bookmaking or whatever. So you don't have that kind of surveillance. The sentences um, get minimum. So if they're doing that, and I heard it, they are, um, it's a smart move. It's a good move. You don't need to. If a guy fucks up, uh, people say, if a guy fucks up, what do you do? You chase him. You don't respect him. You don't re recognize him. You don't help him. And sometimes that's worse. You know, picture yourself, you're with a crowd of friends. And all of a sudden, we chase you. None of the friends talk to you, bother with you, or say anything with you. It's not, a, it's not, a, you know, it's not just a slap on the wrist. You'll wind up having to move. So you don't necessarily have to kill and gangs like uh, M13, groups like that, they, they kill. They're going to take all the heat. Let them take the fucking heat and go to prison for fucking life and do all that time. You know, relax, sit back and uh, chill. Sounds like crazy coming from me, but I, I, it's my advice to any of my... Uh, Friends, former friends, <coughs> in the mob. Sit back a little bit. Don't throw your life in prison. And today especially, all these fucking phones and cameras, and I know Percy because I know a lot of FBI guys, you guys are stuck with a lot of fucking CIs. That's a confidential informant. And they got bugs all over the fucking place. Don't underestimate. They know what you guys are doing. Now my FBI friends are going to say, why the fuck would you tell them that? Because they're my friends. <laughs> Thank you, Sammy. David Spawn is asking about what happened inside the Gemini Lounge. You know, that's like saying, you know, what do you go when you die? You go in, uh, in a morgue. You, in a morgue. Oh. It's like a fucking morgue. If you knew the place and you knew what was going on, it was cold and dreary. And the bartender was Roy's uncle, I think he was. They used to call him Dracula, bro. This motherfucker looked like Dracula. And he would call Roy, hey, there's a guy left in the bar and he's drunk. And they would take the guy out and kill him. And one time I asked uh, Roy, for no reason, you just go in the bar and grab a guy? Yeah. And uh, what do you do? You take him in, I take him in the club. We kill him. We cut him from his balls up to his neck, hang him upside down and uh, drain his blood out and everything so that when we saw him into pieces and get rid of him, you know, it's not messy. And the guy did nothing. No. He said, you do that, right, Sammy? So me, I said, yeah, 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 I do that too. Yeah, I, I guess. I don't never did that. I fucked that, bro. I ain't doing that kind of shit. So he, it was that that was the the club that he hung out, and uh, that was the bar right on the corner. It was attached right around the corner, a couple of steps. You were in that club. Nice. The Gemini Lounge. Dude, wow, what a fucking name! And Roy Gem DeMeo owned it. Well, I don't know if he owned it, but yeah, I, I guess him or one of his guys or somebody, he had full control over it. Awesome. Thank you, Sammy. We have about 12 minutes left. We're going to do a couple of lightning round, quick answer, right off the top of your head questions. Just a couple, not too many. Lightning round. I'm mm -hmm. terrible at this. I like that. <laughs> Chris Rainbow wants to ask, if you could have a sit-down with anyone past or present, who would it be? I would love to sit down with Tato and discuss old times, old days and situations. And I would love to say, Tato, how am I doing now, bro? With all this social media and everything, are you mad at me? And I know he'd love me. So I would love to sit down with him. That's good. Vinny Rubio, what was your favorite place to visit or eat in Las Vegas? Huh? Las Vegas, favorite place in Las Vegas. I don't give a shit about Las Vegas, bro. I, I don't have a favorite place in Las Vegas. I haven't been there in years and years and years, way before I got arrested in 90. I don't know 
when the last time I was there. I might go there in the near future. They're talking about it, but I, I haven't been there in 100 years, so I don't know any favorite place. I have no favorite place. McDougal's Bagel Store or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. Nice. Uh, what music <coughs> did the mob listen to, or your mob guys, listen to in the 1980s? What we listened to? Mm-hmm. Each other. What do you mean by songs? Music. Or, like, what oh, was, music yeah, what in were the, the 80s? Yeah, what the songs, yeah. Oh, who was that? Give, give me his money back. I, I can't answer that question. <laughs> Or even like in the '60s and '70s, do you remember any songs yeah, on the radio? Yeah, there's so or... many. The 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 Righteous Brothers. Uh, the, I love songs like that. I mean, uh, Marvin Gaye. I mean, there was tons and tons of. You know, we had uh, what the hell was that program? Um, Soul Train or Soul Music, Rhythm and Blues. There was no hip hop then. So I mean, there was tons of rock and roll. You know Elvis Presley. There was so many different people and songs. I right off the top of my head, you stumped me. <laughs> Did you like to dance to any of those songs, Sammy? I'm not really. I uh, you know I I dealt. Uh, I'm not really a dancer, and uh, I would dance with a woman in a slow dance. You know, ve- you know, very slow, that uh, little two step job and. You know, bite her on the neck every once in a while and rub up against her. And so, like, you know, a sexy type of thing, like uh, real slow. It's almost like having sex on the dance floor. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, Sammy. Whiskey Glass Fishings is asking, did you ever personally find a bug from the cops? Without a doubt. I'm the guy who found the bug in the club with John Gotti. You know, I was sitting, there was a big leather chair, right? So I was sitting on the chair, and he was sitting at the table with a few guys. So I just sat at the chair and uh, moving a little bit, and I feel something hit my leg, boop, and then hit it again, boop. I said, what the fuck is that? I think it's a mouse or something. So I get on my hands and knees, and I look on the, and there's a wire with a, with a little, you know, little button it looks like swinging back and forth i said i'll be a motherfucker i picked the chair up a little bit and there it is the wires in there it must have unhooked there was a piece of tape it must have got loose and uh so john's looking at me i go oh oh, no look it was a bug we left it there we left it there purposely because we talked into it we said things. I said something. George Gabriel's an FBI agent. He was a case agent and said, I almost fucked up the whole Gotti and, and my indictment because when I, we were there, I whispered to John, ask me out loud, who did the Castellano hit? He looked at me. I said, come on. I went by the chair. And he, hey, Sammy. Who do you think did the Castellano hit? The truth. Bro, law enforcement had a thing for him and everything like that. You know, he was driving them nuts. I guarantee you they fucking hit him, bro. You know, but you never know. But it looks like, I, look at a hit like, who would do that in the middle of the street, in the middle of Manhattan? I bet you any fucking money the, the government whacked him. That tape, I was on tape. Almost killed the whole case because the lawyers would say, look, they're comfortable in their own environment. That's what you're saying. This is their club. They're super comfortable there. Sammy don't know nothing what the fuck is going on with the head. John's asking him, how the fuck are they indicted on this? But, you know, they found ways to go around it and uh, indicted us anyway. I wasn't indicted on the Castellano hit, maybe because of that. John was anyway. There was a lot more he's caught on tape admitting it himself. <coughs> so that's about it, is finding a bug. Thank you, Sammy. That's awesome. I never heard that one. Yeah, and there I found go. a lot more bugs, but that one was the most important. Wow. 
Uh, Betty Ann Tavano in your super chat wants to tell you with teddy bears, kisses, and hugs to stop fucking smoking. <laughs> well, Alicia said it with, uh, with teddy bears and what? I see teddy bears, pink hearts, and kisses. Well, Betty if I, Ann. If I get some of those kisses, Betty Ann, I'll stop smoking. I, I promise you. Sammy, we're going to wrap it up. Tell your viewers where they can see a new chess video today. Listen, the chess video we're just putting out today, I, I did a thing about chess. And I'm going to put it out on uh, on Patreon. And, uh, and I'm going to show you a little bit about chess. And uh, um, where else am I putting this thing out? It's coming out Friday, but you could see it today. Unscented. Uncensored. Uncented. Uh, but how's it, if you couldn't see it today and it's coming out Friday. Friday, YouTube oh, is the family friendly oh, like, PG. That's pretty good. So it's, you could see it today for free on Patreon and it's coming out Friday for free on, uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whispering. Why? And it's going to be the fireside format that everybody loves so much that you do. The fire. Well, she's she's telling it. That's good. I'm not going to repeat it, but she, the fireside. You're going to love that. Listen, guys. I really, really appreciate the interaction with you guys. You're liking it, and I want to tell you another thing. You guys, I read so many. Uh, comments about how you like and love the other studio and uh, we're just working on so many different things I can't get to it but I'm never getting rid of it I, I love it myself me and Richie put that together ourselves I mean I did have a studio come in Richie was away I helped uh, the studio guys assemble it and everything like that I said oh you're handy yeah, a little bit and uh so, uh, I, you know, I love that you love that, and you uh, I don't. I saw all your text messages about it, and it, we're gonna do that more and more. And even if I move, I'm gonna rip it out and br bring it with me wherever I go. So, uh, and we're doing a lot of things now. Again, I'm about to expand, and I'm a little confused on, you know. <laughs> How many square feet do I need? What do I need? I don't know. I mean, they're picking up the garbage in the back. All right, that's not, that, fuck it. It's just what's normal. They'll know. Get the bodies out of that. Uh... Get the dead hookers quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where's the landlord? Is it the, is it the fucking thing? But anyway, um, you know, I'm thinking about how many square feet I need and where there's no garbage trucks doing what they're doing now and this is fucking great so you know this is not built bullshit you know one thing i don't do is bullshit so like and i'm not cut, cutting this out don't cut this out this is a live track we can't cut it out right all right good leave it in leave it in. it's good so i guess they're done with their garbage and uh, all you guys i love yous and uh i think this is the end of the video so my normal i'm gonna give you my normal adios Motherfuckers.